Hi good people, Titus here for part 2 of our grid system tutorial, and in this video we'll add some materials to our grid system to give it a little more life. Let's not waste any time and jump right into it. Okay, last we left off we created our grid system, uh, so right now we just need to create a material uh, and add some colors for it. We can right click and create a new material, we'll call it M underscore grid. Double click and we can dock that into our main scene. Uh, we can set the blend mode of the material to be translucent. That'll unlock the emissive color options. We can then uh, simply hold the three key and click into the graph and then right click, convert that to a parameter that we will call color. It's important to note the name that you give here because this is gonna be the name we're gonna pass into one of our functions. Uh, we can hold M and click into the graph to add a multiply node and then hold S click into the graph, that'll add a scalar that will title power. Default power value we'll give it is going to be 2. We'll pass that into the B channel and then that into the emissive color. We can then hold S, click into the graph to add our last scalar. We'll call this opacity. Our default value will be 0 0.25 and we will pass this into the opacity key. Go ahead and save your material head back to your main scene and on the material right click and create a material instance. We'll call this MI underscore grid for material instance. We can double click and check all the boxes to enable them and you can give it a random color and adjust any settings you like. We'll save that and now we're going to go into our BP underscore grid and we're going to be uh, creating some new functions to actually handle the material generation so we can append the color. So under your functions, we created three private functions. So we'll hit the plus sign and we're going to create one more function. It'll be create material instance. And in the details panel, we're going to set this to be private and update the category to private. So it organizes it in the left hand side like so. The function is going to have some input and output pins. The input pins are going to be the color and the type will be a linear color. Then we're also going to add an opacity value and that's going to be a float. And then if you want you can add a third input called power. That way you can dynamically adjust the power. Uh, when you drop the grid in if you prefer. I'm going to leave mine just to the basic two um, just to make this a simple tutorial. And then for the output pin we'll label that as the material and then the type you'll have to search for is material instance dynamic and then inside this you'll have four different options. The one we want is the object reference. This is going to be our basic setup for this function. We can pull off the main execution pin into a create dynamic material instance. The parent we're going to search for is the mi underscore grid for the material instance that we just created uh, just a few seconds ago. We will leave the uh, optional name and the creation flags to their default values. Now from here, you'll want to pull off the return value into a set vector parameter value. The reason you want to pull off the return node is if you right click and try to do it, you'll notice the node actually pulls up here. It has the same name, but when you try to feed into the target, it won't let you do it. Just some blueprints are like this, so that's why it's easier to pull off your return pins when you're doing some of these nodes. Now the parameter name we're going to want to reference here is going to be color and that's going to have to match whatever you named it here. And then on our input node we had a color node, we can pass that into the color value. And then we'll pull off our return value again, but this time we're going to do a set scalar parameter value. The scalar in this case is going to be opacity 
and I will pass in my opacity value here. If you are also doing the power, you will want to duplicate this node and the parameter name will be power and then you'll just use the third uh, input pin that you were uh, creating. All right, but we have uh, our return node. We're gonna wanna take our return value off the uh, material instance and pass that in here. And then we can hook up our execution pins like so. And that's going to be the basic function uh, to create our material. So now we have the function to create our material, but you'll notice our grid is still blank. So we're gonna come to the construction uh, script here. In the previous video, we uh, set up the mesh section, but we, uh, we never set the material. Um, to be able to do this, we're gonna need some references. So let's pull the construction script back. And we'll pull off this, and we're gonna call that function we just made. So that was create material instance. And if you look at our global variables, we have a line color and a square color. So we're gonna be doing this twice. So we'll drag our line color in and our line opacity. And then off the material, we can right click, promote it to a local variable. And we can probably call this the lines material instance. And then from here, we'll pull into another create material instance. It's the same function. But this time, we're simply going to pass in our square color. And then our square opacity. And just like before, we'll right click promote this to a local variable. This time, it'll be the square material instance. And this will be the basic setup uh, just to get our uh, materials all referenced out. Now, off the create mess section that we created in the previous vid, we can call into a set material. The material is going to need a target and a material. Uh, for this one, we're messing with the lines. Um, so we can pull in the lines procedural mesh as the target. And then for the material, we'll need the lines material instance and drag that in like so. Now, if we go to the viewport, you'll notice the lines are black. If we select the line color, click the line color, we can then, you know, pick a color that you prefer. Compile and save, and you'll notice it shows up when we play our map. The other thing to note too is because we made this uh, editable on the construction script, you'll have a color value. So you can actually change this per instance of the uh, grid. So if you have different levels, you can have different grid colors if you prefer. All right, so we got the grid material, but we still haven't got the selection material working. So let's go back to our construction script Let's comment this out as create line material. Uh, the first three passes we did, we basically drew the uh, horizontal lines, then we drew the vertical lines, and then we just used the uh, created the materials and gave it the color. So on the uh, the fourth pin, we can basically kind of do the same thing. We'll create the lines for the square and then we'll create a material and we'll give it a color. So let's pull off the third pin here. And we'll call into our draw line function that we made in the previous video. And just like the previous video, we'll wanna right click and split the structure pins. And then in our local variables, we created um, the square vertices and triangles. So we can drag these into uh, the vertices spot and the triangle spot. The math is a little bit easier um, on the squares because we're 
and the other one we had to draw a vertical and horizontal lines so it was basically double the math uh, this one we can actually just take our tile size and do a get we can pull off that into a divide node we'll divide by two to get the the half value and then we can pass that into the start y and the end y the uh, full tile size will actually be the end x and then the start x we want to be zero the thickness we can actually set as the full tile size as well so that's why this one's a little bit easier on the math now we won't want to show our uh, square um, at launch so we'll need a way to control that because we're going to be basically handling that through code so we can drag in the procedural mesh for the square call in the set visibility and we will set that to disabled just for testing purposes I'm going to enable the new visibility for now but we will turn that off uh, in just a second we'll then pull into a create mesh uh, section and we will use the uh, squares reference this time and then we can just pass in the square vertices as well as the square triangles and then from there we can call into the set material this time we're going to be targeting the squares procedural mesh and we will want to pass in our squares material instance reference that we created just a second ago now if we compile and save this go back to the viewport you should notice that the starting square uh, should look a little bit different it's hard to see we can click the square color and then we can change it to something different maybe a white and then you can see that's working uh, just fine now before we end the video we'll want to make sure we go back to our construction script and under the set visibility you'll want to toggle this to off and then go back and confirm that it is gone all right everyone we'll cut the video here to keep it short but in the next one we'll set up some functions to utilize our new grid for player movement as always thanks for watching consider subscribing and we'll see you on the next one